everyone. Hope you all are having an amazing day. To make your day even more interesting, we at Intellipad have brought a very interesting video on Arima model. But before we begin the session, make sure to subscribe to our channel and also hit on the bell icon so that you will never miss an update from us. Why do we need Arima model? So an Arima model is a class of statistical models for analyzing and forecasting time series data. It is an acronym which stands for Autoregressive Integrated Moving Average. So it is a generalization of the simpler autoregressive moving average and that's the notion of integration. So these ARIMA models are applied in some cases where data shows evidence of non-stationarity and an initial differencing step can be applied one or more times to eliminate this non-stationarity. So a random variable which is time series is said to be stationary if its statistical properties are all constant over time. So a stationary series has no trend, that is its variations around its mean have a constant amplitude and it wiggles in a consistent fashion, that is its short term random time patterns always look the same in a statistical sense. The latter condition means that its autocorrelations, which is nothing but correlations with its own prior deviations from the mean, remain constant over time or equivalently that its power spectrum remains constant over time. So a random variable of this form can be viewed as a combination of signal and noise and the signal could be a pattern of fast or slow mean reversion or sinusoidal oscillation and it could also have a seasonal component. So an ARIMA model can be viewed as a filter that tries to separate the signal from the noise and the signal is then extrapolated into the future to obtain forecasts. So what exactly is ARIMA model? The ARIMA forecasting equation for a stationary time series is linear. That is, regression type equation in which the predictors consist of lags of the dependent variable or lags of the forecast errors. That is, predicted value of y is equal to a constant or a weighted sum of one or more recent values of y or a weighted sum of one or more recent values of the errors. So the acronym ARIMA is descriptive, capturing the key aspects of the model itself. So AR means autoregression. So model that chooses the dependent relationship between an observation and some number of lagged observations. And I stands for integrated. So this is used for differencing of raw observations. That is subtracting one observation from another observation of the previous time step in order to make the time series stationary. And MA stands for moving average. So it is a model that uses the dependency between an observation and residual errors from a moving average model applied to lagged observations. And each of these components are explicitly specified in the model as a parameter. And there's a standard notation used for these three aspects, P, D and Q, where the parameters are substituted with integer values to quickly indicate the specific ARIMA model being used. So P denotes the number of lag observations included in the model and it is also called the lag order. D stands for the number of times that the raw observations are differenced and it is also called the degree of differencing. And Q denotes the size of the moving average window. It is also called the order of moving average. So now we'll look at the assumptions of ARIMA model. So here the first assumption is that the series is stationary. Essentially, this means that the series is normally distributed and the mean and variance are constant over a long time period. Next is uncorrelated random error. So we assume that the error term is randomly distributed and the mean and variance are constant over a time period. So the Durbin-Watson test is the standard test for correlated errors. We also assume that there are no outliers in the series as outliers may affect conclusions strongly and can be misleading. The last assumption is the random shocks or the random error component. So if any shocks are present, they are assumed to be randomly distributed with a mean of zero and a constant variance. Now we'll look at the steps to build ARIMA model. Sometimes ARIMA model is also known as Box Jenkins method. So the Box Jenkins method is a stochastic model building process and it is an iterative approach that consists of the following three steps. So the first step is identification. Here we use the data and all related information to help select a subclass of the model that may best summarize the data. And next step is estimation. So here we use the data to train the parameters of the model. And the third step is diagnostic checking. 
So here we evaluate the fitted model in the context of the available data. If you want to make a career in data science, then IntelliPath has IIT Madras Advanced Data Science and AI Certification Program. This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by IIT professors and industry experts. And check for areas where the model may be improved. And this entire process is iterative. So as new information is gained during diagnostics, we can circle back to step one and incorporate that new information back into new model classes. So let's take a look at these steps in more detail. So the identification step can be further broken down. So first, we assess whether the time series is stationary. And if it is not, we determine how many differences are required to make it stationary. And after that, we identify the parameters of an ARIMA model for the data. Now let's have a look at some of the tips during identification. So it is advised to use unit root statistical tests on the time series to determine whether or not it is stationary. And also we need to avoid over differencing as much as possible. So differencing the time series more than what is required can result in the addition of extra serial correlation and additional complexity. Now we look at the steps for configuring AR and MA. So two diagnostic plots can be used to choose the P and Q parameters for the ARIMA model. They are autocorrelation function and partial autocorrelation function. So the ACF plot summarizes the correlation of an observation with lag values. The X axis shows the lag and the Y axis shows the correlation coefficient between minus one and one for negative and positive correlation. While the PACF plot summarizes the correlations for an observation with lag values, which are not accounted for by prior lagged observations. So both these plots are drawn as bar charts showing the 95% and 99% confidence intervals as horizontal lines. So the bars that cross these confidence intervals are therefore more significant and worth noting. Now you may observe some useful patterns when you make these two plots, such as the model is AR if the ACF trails off after a lag and has a hard cutoff in the PACF after a lag. So this lag is taken as the value for P. And the model is MA if the PACF trails off after a lag and has a hard cutoff in the ACF after the lag. And this lag value is taken as the value for Q. And the model is a mix of AR and MA if both the ACF and PACF trail off. So that was the process involved in identification. And the next step is estimation. So estimation involves using numerical methods to minimize a loss or error term. The method of least squares can be used for this. However, for models involving an MA component, there is no simple formula that can be applied to obtain the estimates. And the third step is diagnostic checking. So the idea of diagnostic checking is to look for evidence that the model is not a good fit for the data. The two useful areas to investigate diagnostics are overfitting, and residual errors. So what do we do in overfitting? We start off by checking if the model overfits the data. Generally, this means that the model is more complex than it needs to be and captures random noise in the training data. So this is a problem for time series forecasting because it negatively impacts the ability of the model to generalize, resulting in poor forecast performance on data which is out of the sample data. So careful attention must be paid to both in-sample and out-of-sample performance and this requires the careful design of a robust test harness for evaluating models. And what do we do in case of residual errors? So these forecast residuals provide a great opportunity for diagnostics. A review of the distribution of errors helps in removing out the bias in the model. So the errors from an ideal model would resemble white noise, which is a Gaussian distribution with a mean of zero and a symmetrical variance. And for this purpose, you may use density plots, histograms, and QQ plots that compare the distribution of errors to the expected distribution. So a non-Gaussian distribution may suggest an opportunity for data pre-processing. And a skew in the distribution or a non-zero mean may suggest a bias in forecasts that may be correct. Additionally, an ideal model would leave no temporal structure in the time series of forecast residuals. So these can be checked by creating ACF and PACF plots of the residual error time series. And the presence of serial correlation in the residual errors suggests further opportunity for using this information in the model. If you want to make a career in data science, then IntelliPath has IIT Madras Advanced Data Science and AI Certification Program. 
This course is of very high quality and cost effective as it is taught by IIT professors and industry experts.